Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools and I'm back again with another tutorial and in this lesson I am super excited to premiere our very first tutorial inside of Blackmagic Fusion. Now I know you're probably thinking, well Kev, this was supposed to be a DaVinci Resolve tutorial. Why are you talking about Fusion? Well that is the best part about this tutorial. The best part is, is that we're going to be working in the newest version of Resolve, version 15, that comes with integrated fusion compositing technology built right into your Resolve interface. And let me tell you something, I was super excited to work on this tutorial because I absolutely love the workflow. This workflow with node-based compositing was made for this Studio Mats product. All right, now before we get rolling, I do want to mention that if you want to check out this fantastic new product from Rampant Design Tools, you can do one of two things. You can click on the link in the notes at the bottom of this tutorial, or what you can do is you can simply head on over to the Rampant Design Tools website. You're going to navigate over to the Products drop-down and head on down to Animated Mats. You'll notice right here in front of us, we have the Rampant Studio Mats Volume 2. And if I mouse over top of it, you'll get this great preview showing you some of the very cool studio mats that come with this product. Now, what makes this new product so unique? Well, one thing that I love about it, and probably its greatest selling feature besides the 102 elements that come with it, is the fact that not only do you get the 102 elements, you get individual elements that make up each one of those specific looks. So for example, with the one you just saw that had the three bars coming in with the three pieces of footage, you not only get that finished style mat or that finished studio mat, but you also get each bar individually so you can easily get in and put things together. As you can see right now in front of you, there's seven different video pieces that you'd get with this element plus the final actual studio mat. All right. Now, I don't want to take too long in our introduction because I'm super excited again, like I said, to get into Resolve and to show you this new workflow. So let's do that right now. All right, so let's Command or Alt and tab into DaVinci Resolve. And as I mentioned in the introduction, I am super excited about this tutorial. Why? Because it's really the first tutorial using Rampant Design Tools elements that we're going to be able to show off utilizing the integrated Fusion application in the new DaVinci Resolve 15. Now, I am working in the public beta, but this will obviously carry forward into the release version as well as future versions after this. Now, utilizing the node-based composite in a Fusion inside a Resolve is so much easier than the previous method of importing elements as mats and attaching them to clips. We have a lot more flexibility with the workflow that I'm going to show you. Now we are going to be utilizing two methods inside of this tutorial. One of the methods that we're going to be doing is to take a single shot and to incorporate that single shot into the entire rampant element right here, the studio mat element. And then what we're going to do is we're going to divide it up and we're going to utilize the two separate parts that also come with this studio mat and really with all the studio mats inside of this bundle to recreate two elements that make up the one final look. All right, but let's start out simple. Let's start out with the one rampant element to rule them all. All right, now the first thing we're going to need to do is to pick a shot to work with. And I think I'm gonna take this shot right here. You'll see it's a shot of New York City. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna drag it and drop it down into my timeline. Now what I normally like to do just to get an idea of timing is to take the shot, drop it into the timeline, and then take the studio mat and drop it onto video track number two, just so we can sort of see how things will play out in here. Now, I know that this element is about 12 seconds long, and what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this element start about two seconds in. I think that's pretty good, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is just turn snapping on. There we go, perfect. And you can see that right about there, is where our element is going to start and that's fine it's going to come to about here now this is important to note this two second gap off the top because we're going to need to take that into consideration when we're going to be working with this matte element inside of the fusion module of resolve okay now for right now i'm just going to delete that element because unlike our previous workflow where we had to bring things in as mats and then attach them to clips and to be honest it was a very convoluted workflow and i really didn't like it we actually don't need to do that at all with this clip in our timeline what we're going to do is we're going to navigate down the bottom right here to the fusion module i'm just going to click on fusion 
And just like that, Resolve is going to switch over, and I'm now inside of Fusion. Believe it or not, it was that complicated. Now, what we have here is we have our media clip that's currently in our timeline and the output. So basically, this one node is connected from our media clip to the output. Okay, and we're going to be utilizing some other nodes in here in between to get the mat information and things like that. So don't worry, just follow along. And once you see how well this node-based workflow works, I guarantee you're going to want to jump in and start working with it in every project that you work on. Okay, so what we need to do first of all is to get that rampant design tools elements into our Fusion workflow. So what I'm going to do right from within Fusion is open the media pool. Okay, now this is the element here. This is the first one. Now we can even zoom in on it just to get a little bit of a better idea of it. And what I'm going to do is simply take it, I'm going to drag it and drop it right into Fusion just like that. Now what's important to keep in mind is that you might be thinking that as I'm bringing these elements in, they're appearing in my timeline, but they're actually not. They're actually part of this clip. Okay, so we're actually not going to see anything other than just this one clip here. Okay, I'm going to switch back to Fusion. And let's now start to get in and let's work with this. I'm just going to disconnect this node here. So everything is going to go black, which is fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the node that I know is the Rampant Design Tools Studio Matte element. Now, just to make my life easier, what I do have the ability to do is to right click on the element. Now, it's actually just appearing outside of the frame, but I can select Rename or the keyboard shortcut to rename this clip is F2. So let's just for the purposes of what we're doing call this Rampant Design Tools Studio Mat, just to make my life easier. And we'll call it full, just so we know that it's not one part or the other. I'm now gonna say okay, and you'll see that that clip has now been renamed. So it's a lot easier for us to work with. Now, what we're gonna need to do is to call up a node that will let us do essentially a mat key inside of Fusion. Now, there's a couple ways that we could do this. I could navigate up to the effects library and attempt to find what I need, or I like using a great keyboard shortcut of shift and the space bar. Now you'll see that I'm being prompted to add a tool. So what is the tool that I'm going to want to use? Well, I'm just gonna type in channel booleans and it's actually booleans plural right here. I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna say okay to drop this in. Now it's immediately connected it to the Rampant Design Tools Studio Mat element. I'm just gonna disconnect that for right now. I wanna have all these nodes separately and I'm gonna connect them together in just a second. Now you'll remember when I was showing you the clip inside of the edit module, I did mention that we wanted this rampant design tools element to start two seconds in. So what I'd like it to do is I'd like it just to hold on that initial frame where it's gonna be blank. It's not gonna be doing any transition or anything like that for two seconds. So what we have to do is with that element selected, I'm gonna come over here to hold first frame and I'm gonna set this value to be 48, which is 24 frames per second for two seconds. That's two times 24 which gives us 48. Now what I normally also like to do, just for the sake of having the element transition off and then not reappear, is I normally will just hold the last frame for a ridiculous amount of time, like a thousand frames, okay? So there we go. So we now have our two seconds of hold off the start. So I know that with the clip that's in my timeline, the ramp and design tools element's gonna wait two seconds before it starts to do the transition on, okay? So at this point, we're ready to start connecting elements. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the media and I'm gonna connect it to that channel booleans. I'm now gonna take the rampant design tool studio mat and I'm gonna connect it again to that node. Now you'll see that Resolve knows where to connect things. I didn't actually have to connect it to any specific input. It knew where I wanted to attach it. Now what I wanna draw your attention to is the fact that anytime I head on over top of a node, you'll notice that I have these two little buttons down here at the bottom. One is to call this up on the right viewer, and one is to call it up on the left viewer. Now, for the purposes of what we're doing, I just want to see it on the left viewer. Now, also remember, we're at frame 31. Now, I told it to hold for 48 frames before we actually see anything. So I'm going to jump down to about here, and you'll see that I can see that rampant design tools element. But it's not actually doing what I want it to do. It's not actually making it a cutout like we would hope it would. Well, that's because I haven't gotten in and set any of the parameters with this node. And let's do that right now. Now, the operation that I want to use is actually a multiply, just like that. And believe it or not, we're pretty much done. Because you'll see that if I come back to just before 48 frames, there's that element transitioning on. It's going to stay on the screen for the length of that rampant design tools element. And then it's going to transition off. And remember, I put that hold on there for a thousand frames. So it's pretty much going to stay there 
right till the end of the clip. Now you might think that you're done and you could simply go back to the edit module except for one problem. We haven't actually sent this out of Fusion yet, which is the last step, and that's connecting this channel Boolean's node to that media out. And once you do that, you can simply head on back to the edit module, come back to the beginning of your clip, and you'll see that once I get to that two second mark, our transition's gonna start to reveal our clip. And this element is now doing exactly what we wanted to do. Now, of course, we could get in and we could now crop this and say, you know, we want this clip to end here. I could, of course, also say that I want it to start at the two second mark, but just sort of get how this is going to work, okay? So there we go, perfect. This clip is now ready to go start to finish, okay? Very nice. All right, I'm just gonna delete this now. What we're gonna do is we're now gonna get in and utilize this technique using two different elements and two different video clips to create this look that we have on the left-hand monitor. All right, now much like we had done before, we can get in and we can start taking clips and putting them in to figure things out, but I think we're gonna keep things simple. We're gonna stick with that two second offset from the beginning of our clips. Now we do need to have a clip in the timeline so that we can start attaching things inside of Fusion. So I think I'm just gonna take the waterfall shot. I'm just gonna take that, drop it in here. That's looking pretty good. And what we're gonna do is with that clip selected, I'm gonna head on into Fusion. Because remember, everything else is gonna be brought in right directly from the media pool, okay? So let's set things up exactly the way that we had them set up before. I think what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna have this clip on the bottom and then we're gonna have the other clip on the top, okay? Now just to make things easier, I'm gonna give myself a little bit more screen real estate here. And this is the element, this is gonna be the bottom element. Nice, and this is our top element here, perfect. So let's take our bottom element, we're just gonna drag it into our flow here. And we could get in and rename this clip if we want. I think I'm just going to actually rename this media clip here. I'm just going to call it F2. We're going to call this Waterfalls. Just so we can keep track of everything. It just makes life a little bit easier. Now I'm going to disconnect that node. You'll remember the technique is exactly the same from what we just talked about. Shift and spacebar to call up the select tools window. We're going to type in channel. And we want channel booleans, plural. I'm just going to say OK. Now it's automatically attached it. We can disconnect it just to keep ourselves organized if we want to. Let's take waterfalls and let's attach it. Let's take our rampant studio mats and let's attach that. Now here's where things get a little bit interesting. Okay, what we now want to do, and I'm just going to view our channel booleans node on the right viewer here. Let's come down a little bit just so we can see exactly what it's doing. And let's make sure, much like we did before, that we're going to give this element a two second offset off the top and a 1000 offset at the end to hold so hold for two seconds off the top hold for a thousand frames at the end perfect now you'll remember what we talked about before what we want to do is come up to our operation and set that to be multiply now one thing that's important for me to point out at this point is that you'll notice that this element does do exactly what we want it to do Except for one problem. We know what the universal symbol for transparency is. It's the checkerboard. But I don't see a checkerboard here. I just see a black background. I'd really like to see that checkerboard just to make sure that this is actually transparent so that when we add the other element, it's actually going to fit in the way that we want it to. So how do we go about doing that? Well, right down here at the bottom where it says 2 alpha, you'll notice that the alpha foreground has been chosen. And that's actually not what we want to use. What we want to use is either the red, green, or blue foreground element. Doesn't matter which one. Let's just choose the red element. And as soon as I do, you'll now see that we have our checkerboard transparent background, meaning that this element is completely transparent. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Not entirely happy with where that waterfall is positioned. What I would really like to do is to adjust its positioning. So how do I go about doing that? Well, we're gonna add a node after waterfalls and before our channel booleans for a DVE effect. So let's do that. Shift space bar, I'm just gonna punch in DVE. We're gonna select it, we're gonna say okay, and it's gonna be added because I had the waterfalls node selected in between waterfalls and our channel boolean. So what we're gonna do is with that DVE selected, I'm just gonna grab the center point for Y, and start adjusting it. Let's get it to right about there. I think that's looking pretty darn good. Okay, perfect. 
Now, we don't want to attach this to the media out. We want to combine this with the other element before we go about doing that. So how are we going to go about doing that? Well, here's the beauty part of working with this method inside of Fusion and inside of Resolve in general. What I can now do is I can actually take all of these nodes and copy them. And I'm just going to paste them down and move them right over here. Okay. Now, remember, this is my bottom element which would be this element right here. So what I want to now do is take the top element and I want to bring that in. I'm just going to drop it in right there. And I'm going to disconnect this node from channel booleans and I'm just going to reconnect the other node in its place. Now remember, I still have to come in and set this to be 48 frames and I have to set this value here to be 1000, okay? But what I've just done, if I change the viewer to view this channel boolean, is I've now set this up as the top mat. Okay, now the waterfalls clip is not the clip that I want. I actually want the city clip. So I'm going to take the city clip and I'm just going to attach it to that DVE and take a look at how quickly I've adjusted this. Now keep in mind that I adjusted the DVE to drag it down for when we had our element at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just do this in reverse and send this element all the way to the top just like that and take a look at what I've just done in a matter of seconds. I've essentially just rebuilt this element and flopped the mat so that it now appears at the top of the screen. Okay, so what we now have is we now have our top element and we also have our bottom element. So that begs the question, how do I combine the two? Well, let me show you. What I'm going to do, and just to keep things nice and organized here, is I'm just going to move this node right over here. And we're going to, again, shift spacebar. I love that shift spacebar shortcut. We're going to type in merge. Okay, because I need a merge node and I'm just going to say okay and there's my merge node. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my channel booleans here and I'm going to drag it in to the background. I'm going to take the channel booleans here, drag it into the foreground like such. And what we've now done is combine these two elements into one. Okay, now something else I want to draw your attention to. And this is where you can start to have some fun with this workflow. Okay, I'm just going to bring the merge node down just a little bit here. Okay. Here's where you can have some fun. Now, I can get in, and to be honest, I really don't care if the background's transparent because when I'm working in Resolve, that transparency is going to appear as black. But what if I wanted that background color not to be black? What if I wanted it to be white so that when this element actually transitions in, that's a white background there? So how would we go about adding an actual background in here? Very simple. Again, remember that shortcut, Shift Spacebar. I'm gonna type in background. Okay, there's our background. I'm going to say, okay, there's our background element here. Let's pick a color. Let's pick white. Okay, so there's the background. And what are we going to do now? Well, we're going to use another merge node. Okay, I'm just going to say, okay, there's merge. We're going to merge that with this. And what we now have is we now have that white background in here. So this is actually going to be a white background to start. It's going to transition in, and you're going to be able to see that white background in between the two rampant design tools elements. So we could now send this to the media out just like such. I can now come back to my edit module and this element is now done where it transitions in with that white background sits there for the entire length of time and then transitions out like that when it's done. Now of course at any time if I wanted to change that background color all I got to do is hop back into fusion come to the background color change it to whatever I want, you'll now see I can come back to the media out node and now that background's red. But to be honest, in most cases when I'm doing this, I'm going to want that background to be black. So when I head back to the edit module, you'll now see that we have that element looking the way that we had it looking at in the beginning, just with two different images in the top and in the bottom. So I hope you see that with the newest version of Resolve, you have an unlimited amount of power when it comes to compositing inside of Fusion, inside of Resolve. And it's never been more apparent than when working with these fantastic rampant studio mats, you're going to be able to get in and add elements into these lightning quick to take all of your Resolve projects to the next level.